it takes me so long to choose music for my performance playlists. I want instrumentals that literally move me with melodies I love feeling, plus dynamic rhythm changes and contrast in tempo that gives me a soundscape in which I can deliver dazzling entertainment. I use very few vocals in any language for universal appeal to the diverse audiences coming through those giant brass doors. Really, people were spending quite a bit for the lavish experience of being in a Moroccan palace with fine feasting and entertainment. I avoided somber or long, slow choices because they don't rivet the attention in the room or invite the spirit of celebration, which is definitely what people here always wanted. As fresh music is like air for me, and improvisation brings the thrill of the unknown, I avoided numbing robotic repetition by bringing a bundle of cassette tapes with a variety of golden era classics, current pop and drum solos to move me through my four or five hours with 10 to 15 sets when busy in all five rooms. It had to be fun for our guests, even the late arrivals being seated minutes before the kitchen closed at 11 p.m. It was new music that evolved my improvisation and advanced my skills with a constant stream of fresh technique I was enthused to share with my students. Well, it was in the Berber room one night while I was dancing to an up-tempo Egyptian pop piece with a strong Saidi beat that one guest obviously found so rousing and nostalgic of good times past, he was moved to dance on the table. I will now explain why even though I have loved dancing on tables, chairs, bar tops, counters, ramps, and stairs, no amount of tipping with smiling gestures ever got me to dance on the tables at Dar Maghreb, even though they barely reached my knees. This was because instead of four reliably stable legs, only a central wrought iron pedestal base supported the big engraved brass tray sitting on top. I was at his table for two, hitting the heavy beats with horizontal and vertical hip accents when the gentleman became so enthused, he leapt to his feet with a big smile and began some lightning fast shoulder shimmies. Great, and not unusual. Guests who loved dancing sometimes joined me and I looked to see that his date was smiling, so it was all good. Unfortunately, next, perhaps due to the glasses and bottle of red wine on their own table, or for another reason I cannot fathom. He chose to jump onto the adjacent couple's table, where not only glasses of champagne with the bottle on ice, yet also food courses were already set. No, no, I yelled, reaching to save him, even though I saw it was too late. He already had his foot on their table, and with zero support on the edge, it instantly flipped down off its base, landing him on the floor on his back. Now picture him laying there, amazed. Forty other diners turning to see what happened, my music still playing as I'm looking down at him. He's drenched in ice water, champagne, couscous, and vegetables, the juicy remains of lemon chicken, the bread basket knocked over, and, uh-oh, broken glass. Even more amazed are the couple whose dinner is now on the floor. Next, it's the fusion of feelings on the face of his date. Naturally, our waiters are quick to get him up, clean him up, and make everything right as can be at both tables. That is, of course, after I've already escaped the scene while playing my cymbals, carefully stepping over his legs, and dancing on tiptoe through the squishy food and sparkly bits of ice and glass. I flipped a little switch behind a pillow that changed my music into the second half of the Berber room and kept dancing. <laughs> 